Terrestrializing is the core mechanic of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Despite the uh, graphical challenges this game faced, the terrestrialize effect is one part of the game I think looks rather pretty, so in this video, I'm gonna recreate parts of it in Shadograph. Let's have a quick look at the effect in game. First, the base Pokemon mesh is still visible beneath the terrestrial layer. Second, I can see lots of emissive light bleeding around the edge, which we can cover with a Fresnel effect node. And finally, there appears to be this sort of triangulation effect, and light reflects off the triangles differently to how it reflects off the base mesh. That gives me plenty to work with. And obviously, I originally chose Mimikyu to test my effect on, but even better, I'll use this goose mesh because there's still no goddamn goose Pokemon and this is the closest I'll get until Gen 10 ends up being based on Canada. Also, it's been my Discord profile picture for the full year I've been procrastinating for making this video. Let's create a new lit graph by right-clicking in the project view and choosing Create Shader Graph, URP Lit Shader Graph, and name it Terrestrialize or something similar. I'll open up the graph and I'll start by adding a few basic properties. First, I'll add a Texture 2D property called Base Texture and a Color property called Base Color. Then wire up the base texture to a sample Texture 2D load, multiply it by the Base Color property and connect the result to the graph's Base Color output. You'll see something like this on almost every graph I make. I will also add two float properties called Metallic and Smoothness and connect them to the corresponding metallic and smoothness graph outputs. That's pretty much it for the base Pokemon mesh. Next, let's deal with the Fresnel effect, and for this I'll add two properties. One is a float called Fresnel Power, and the other is a color called Fresnel Color. For the latter, make sure you go into the Node Properties window and change the mode to HDR, because I want it to use fancy high-intensity colors. On the graph, all I need to do is add a Fresnel Effect node, a very handy node which comes with Shader Graph, and connect the Fresnel Power property to its power input. Essentially, the higher the power, the less thick the glow on the edge of the object becomes. I'll multiply the result by the Fresnel Color property, and that's all we need to do for now. This will eventually be used for the graph's emission output, but we'll deal with that later. Now we get to the highly reflective triangulation effect which I mentioned at the start. The first step in achieving this involves making sure the mesh uses flat faces. Here's the difference between smoothed and flat faced meshes. A tedious solution would involve going into every mesh and disabling the smoothing, but we can deal with this in the shader directly. Since normal smoothing doesn't actually change the world space position of any given fragment, only its normal vector, which is used for the lighting, we can recalculate the normals manually from those positions. We can do that by taking a position node, which should be set to world space, and then output it to DDY and DDX nodes. These are called partial derivative functions, but they're not as scary as they sound. Your GPU typically processes multiple pixels at once, in blocks of 2x2, two two, processing shader instructions basically in lockstep. DDX gets you the difference between the current pixel and the adjacent pixel to the left or right within that 2x2 two two block of whatever you input into the node. So if I input the world position, I'll get a tiny vector that points along the surface of the face. The DDY node does similar, but with the pixel above or below the current one. And that gets us a second tiny vector that points along the face, but perpendicular to the first one. And if you paid attention in your geometry classes, you'll know that you can take the cross product of the two, and it'll give us a third vector as output which is perpendicular to the surface of the face. In other words, it's the normal vector. Just make sure you get the order of the DDY and DDX right. DDY should be the first input to the cross product node. Then let's normalize the result and output it to the graph's normal graph output. And now this shader will turn a smooth shaded object into a flat shaded one. So we don't have to faff around with the mesh import settings, and we don't interfere with the behavior of other shaders which might work best on smooth shaded objects.
Now let's deal with the light reflections on those triangles. There are lots of ways we could go about creating this, and I'm going to talk about two approaches. The first is something we unfortunately can't do in Shader Graph. See, in code-based shaders, the fragment shader can access something called the primitive ID through a semantic called sv underscore primitive ID, which is a fancy way of saying we can access a unique ID for each triangle. I could then use those IDs as a seed value for a random number generator and assign a random color or vector to each triangle, something like this. Shadergraph has nodes like vertex ID, which is similar but obviously for vertices, and instance ID, which is a unique identifier for each mesh when you're using instancing, but for some reason there's no primitive ID or triangle ID node. Consider this my official plea for the Shadergraph team to add a primitive ID node ASAP because it would be so helpful for effects like these. Instead, we're going to create a texture which effectively maps a random value to each triangle. You can do this manually by just exporting the UV layout from whatever modeling software you use, and then painting the texture, but I built a little plugin to automatically do this for me. All it does is read the mesh UV data from the first UV slot and fill in a random color into each triangle, but I won't go over all the code here. It'll be included in the GitHub repository for this product. This is also where I found out that this mimicry mesh has UVs entirely outside the 0 to 1 range, which is just unhinged and caused me a bit of a headache when writing the plugin. Oh well. I just click eat a button and get my texture, which looks like this if I just apply it to the match. One issue with the texture approach is that you have to bump the resolution quite high to avoid pixelation artifacts, and I also found that I had to turn off MIP maps, change from bilinear to point filtering, and turn off compression, because if any of those things were on, then the edges of the triangles look pretty bad. Maybe it doesn't need to be a ridiculous 8192 by 8192 like this, but you get my point. Now let's return to the graph. I'll start by adding a texture 2D property called terrestrial triangles, which is going to be the texture generated by the plugin I just showed you. Let's drag it onto the graph and sample it. Now what I want to do is generate a random vector for each triangle. By using the color as a seed value, every pixel on the same triangle will get the same vector. I'm then going to take the dot product between this random vector and the camera's forward vector which gives us a reflection value that will trigger on random triangles as we swivel the camera around the mesh. Cool, right? Now, Shadergraph doesn't have any nodes that give us a random vector, so instead I'm going to pass the red channel of our texture, remember it's grayscale so we can use any of the R, G or B channels, into three random range nodes. Two of them with additional offsets of 3.14 and 96.07 respectively. Yes, I did pluck those values out of thin air, thanks for noticing. Each random range node needs to go from minus 1 to 1. I'll construct a new vector 3 using those values and normalize the result, and there we have it, a random vector, unique to each triangle. Then let's take a camera node's direction value, normalize it, and take the dot product between it and the vector we just constructed. That's our basic reflection amount, although we're going to refine this a lot. Next, I want to add a way to make the reflections cycle over time, even if we just hold the camera still, which will give a bit more life to the idle animation. I'll add a float property called cycle speed, drag it onto the graph, and multiply it by a time node. We can just add this to the dot product. Next, I'll multiply it by pi, which can be found using a constant node, and pass the result into a sine node. Now the reflections will cycle on and off over time, and our random triangle values act like an offset for the starting position along the sine wave. I'll pass the result into a remap node to change the output range from minus 1 to 1 to the new range of 0 to 1. If we use the reflection values as they are, then personally I think there are way too many reflecting triangles, so I want to add a way to reduce the likelihood of a triangle reflecting by adding a threshold. I'll add a vector 2 property called Reflection Thresholds, which I'm going to use in a smooth step node by using a split node like this. Essentially, any value output by the remap node that is below the first threshold 
results in zero reflection. Anything above the second threshold means full reflection, and anything between the two thresholds means a smooth slope between zero and full reflection. Now I will add the ability to tint the reflection slightly. I don't even think that this is something that Pokemon does, but I thought it would be cool, and really, that's what shaders are all about. Let's add another float property called Color Reflection Strength. This time, I want to make it a slider from 0 to 1 so it's easier to use in the inspector. I am going to create a color in the HSV color space, that's hue, saturation, and value, where we have a random hue, but full saturation and value. Let's go all the way back and grab the random triangle vector, split off just the first component, and construct a new vector 3 with that in the first component, and one hard-coded into the second and third components. That's our HSV color. Then I'll use a color space conversion node to turn it back into an RGB color, because that's what the rest of the graph uses. We can lurk between the original reflection value and the fancy new color using the color reflection strength property in the t-slot, but I'm also going to multiply it by the smooth step result, because if we don't, even the triangles that are meant to lack reflections would receive colors, which I was trying to avoid. We're almost done. Next, I want to add a global control for the overall strength of the reflection portion of the shader, so I'll add a float called reflection strength. I made this a slider, but between 0 and 10, in case I want to force very bright reflections. Let's multiply this with the result of that last lerp we added, and then finally add the Fresnel results from way back earlier in the tutorial. Now we can pass that into the graph submission output. And we can see the effect in action on our map. Feel free to tweak the properties to get the bright mix of reflections and colours you want, and now finally, I can terrestrialize my geese. <laughs> Until next time, have fun honking. I mean, making shaders. <laughs>